So this is a brand new JK battery management system and display screen. And today we are gonna have a look at exactly what do you get in the box, talk about some of the specs and features. We're also gonna talk about what information is displayed on the screen and have a quick look at the smartphone app. So let's get started. So why is the box so big? Well, we're about to find out in just a second. I ended up buying these from lithiumcells.co.za and it's the first time that I'm buying from them, so no idea what we're about to get. I bought it from the online store late Monday evening and it arrived early on Friday morning so we can get started. The first thing we are greeted with is a sticker. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure that this is the BMS, but let's see what else we got in the box. Looks like some more stickers. This house runs on lithium ion phosphate tech built by a man who knows his shit. <laughs> Bit of South African human shining through there. And of course, this looks like the second BMS. Yep, I bought two of them. Next up, I reckon these are the two display screens. So what do we get in the box? Well, it looks like a mounting bracket of sorts. And then pretty much just the two and a half inch screen along with its cable. The cable looks fairly long, measuring in at three and a half meters or about 11 and a half feet. It's also got what looks like a six pin GX20 connector and two Molex style connectors. So quite a lot of connectors here. There's also a loose washer and nut. I assume this is for that GX20 connector. So what is in box number two? Well, it looks just like a BMS and some balance leads. By the way, I'll leave links in the description where you guys can buy all of this stuff and if there's any information that I've left out, so make sure to go and check that out. Also something to note here, it doesn't look like this model of BMS comes with that small little push button switch to turn the BMS on and off, so if you don't end up buying the screen, you may have to make your own little switch setup. When it comes to the balancing leads, there are two lots of balancing leads measuring in at 740 millimeters long or 29 inches and they are 22 gauge wire which is about 0.33 millimeters squared. So connecting up large cells in a large battery pack should actually be pretty easy. And last up is the BMS. Overall, it feels solid, the casing is metal which is good and it has two temperature sensors plugged in at the bottom and a couple of empty plugs for the balance leads, the display screen and heater control. The battery negative and load negative leads are all seven gauge wire which is about 10 and a half millimeters squared and there's two of them per side and they are 110 millimeters long or about 4.3 inches. I do wonder how well these are connected inside the BMS. I mean 150 amps is quite a lot of current and at a later stage maybe we'll need to open it up and have a look. So this model is the JK-B1A20S15P which means it can handle from 8 to 20 lithium ion phosphate cells connected in series and it can handle up to 150 amps of continuous load. It's also got a built-in 1 amp active balancer. You connect to the BMS via Bluetooth and all of the settings are customizable via the smartphone app. It also looks like it's got all of the protections you need for building a battery pack. Things like over and under voltage protection, over current charge and discharge protection, over temperature charge and discharge protection, under temperature charge protection and short circuit protection. And it also has a Coulomb counter built in for measuring energy usage. And one of the other things that I noticed on the back of the BMS in each one of the four corners is uh, a three millimeter threaded hole. Now, not too sure what this is for. Maybe it's for mounting the BMS to your enclosure or maybe it's for mounting a heatsink on the back. I'm not too sure, but at least the holes are there. So this is the two and a half inch display screen that I bought to use my JK BMS. And you can see it's got some basic information on it. It's a color display. And on the right hand side, it's got a gray button, which is used to either sleep or wake the display by momentarily pressing it. Or you can push and hold it in for about three seconds and it either turns off the BMS or it turns the BMS back on. So the basic information on the display in the middle here is 80% and that is our state of charge. In the bottom left hand corner you can see negative 2.3 amps. So that shows our either our discharge or our charging rate. So we're currently discharging at 2.3 amps. 
And in the bottom right hand corner, we've got our pack voltage, which is 53.2 volts. And you can see the numbers on the screen here basically match the numbers in our app. I've also just loosely put the settings into the app, uh, roughly done some stuff so that there are numbers that you guys can look at. Um, obviously, the app has got a lot more information, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Other than that, uh, I think it's quite a neat little uh, sort of display screen to have. It only shows you basic information. Now, you do get a 4.3 inch version, uh, of, not of this display, but of another display. It's also a touch screen and it shows you a, a bit of the stats, a bit more stats about the battery. However, um, we've got the app for that and we'll have a look at that now. So looking at the smartphone app, we are currently connected to our BMS and on the status page. There's also settings and control pages, which we'll get to shortly. But to connect to your BMS, at the top left-hand corner, click on the menu icon. You might need to click on scan and your BMS should show up in the list. Click on that. You may be prompted for a password. Type in 1234, I think is the default password, and then connect. And it'll connect via Bluetooth. Then it's going to show you live information about the BMS and the battery pack. So we can see here some basic information. We've got charge is set to on, discharge is set to on, and our balance is currently off. However, it is set to on, and it would show if the battery is balancing here if the battery needed to be balanced. Other information, we've got battery power, battery capacity, cycle uh, capacity, average cell voltage, balance current. Uh, we've got our battery temperatures from our temperature probes, remaining battery percentage, remaining capacity, our cycle count, our cell voltage difference, which is currently at 6 millivolts, and we've got all of our individual cell voltages down below. We've also got our cell wire resistances right at the bottom of the screen. If we go over to settings, you can either choose default settings for your chemistry of uh, battery or for, for your battery chemistry, lithium ion uh, LTO or lithium ion phosphate. You can also put in custom settings in the bottom here. However, you're probably going to have to click modify password to unlock these custom settings. And the password, if I remember correctly, the default is 123456. Once you've put that in, it'll allow you to change all of these advanced settings below. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but we've got our basic cell count, battery capacity, our balance trigger voltage, and all of these here are the protection. So our over and other under voltage protection, over and under current protection, temperature protections, short circuit protections, and a whole lot more stuff. And we can see here at the bottom, we've got our um, wire resistance settings. If we need to calibrate those, uh, you can do so if you choose. On the control screen, if we head over to that, we can set our charge to either on or off, our discharge to either on or off, or our balance to either on or off. And there's a couple of other things here which we'll get into not in this video. So this is a basic overview of the app. If you want to see a, a proper walkthrough and explanation of each and every uh, item, let us know in the comments and then maybe I'll get around to it at some time. But that is it. And the app works on both Android and iOS. For me, I'm using it, of course, on an iPhone here on iOS and it's been working perfectly fine. So is it worth spending your money and using a JK BMS? Well, I would say as long as the specs and the features continue to function as intended for a decent amount of time, it's worth giving it a try. Although I suppose only time will tell. <laughs> as for the internal build quality, that's also up in the air, but maybe in another video we need to tear this thing down and have a look at how well it's built inside. But we'll leave that for next time. Well guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, Please give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Cheers.